is the meaning of life. That is, why are you here? What's the purpose of your life? Why are you on this earth? That's what we've been discussing for several months now, and the conclusion we reached was that this answer must come from someone who has more knowledge and more wisdom than those of us who have never been off the earth. It just makes sense. It just makes sense to realize that if we're going to try to answer the question, why is the earth here, or why is the world here, or what is the purpose of us being here, then we have to get the answer from somebody who has been outside this world or outside this earth, or at least who has seen more of it or seen it from a greater distance than we human beings have. And, of course, the difficulty is to find such a person. Buddha is certainly isn't that kind of person, nor is Confucius, nor is Zoroaster, nor are any of the Hindu prophets. They all were ordinary human beings like you and me, and they never left the earth. They were buried in the earth. Their bones were able to be dug up and, dis and examined. They have never been off the earth. Even those of us that have been off the earth in space shots or space probes have never been beyond where we can see with our radio telescopes. We have never gone beyond the realms of space that we are able to perceive ourselves. What we need is somebody who has gone beyond the furthest sky, beyond the furthest planet, who in fact knows what being or knows what creature created the whole universe in the first place. And of course, there is only one such person who has ever given any evidence of that kind of experience, and that is the man Jesus of Nazareth. And what we have been doing is examining his life finding out, for instance, that he apparently died and it seemed that he was thoroughly killed and executed by the experts in execution of that day, the Roman soldiers, and he died and yet three days later got up from being dead and continued to live on the earth for another month or more and then disappeared from the earth completely. And all the while, he did it with a great sense of control, saying that he was going to do this, that they were going to execute him, that he would die, and then he would come back from being dead, would live again, and then he would go off permanently to be with the person that he called his father, whom he regarded as the supreme being who had created the whole universe in the first place. And so we've been examining his life, and you, if you have followed through our argument and discussion, must admit that the arguments are very, very strong for believing that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, did in fact exist in the first century and did actually rise from the dead. The documentary evidence is absolutely unquestionable and unanswerable in regard to his resurrection from the dead. Now, if this man, Jesus, is not a lunatic, and you remember we said he hadn't the imbalance that a lunatic would have in his life, and if he is not a liar, and you remember that we said how could he be the greatest ethical teacher in the world and yet lie about the central issue of his whole life, that is his own identity, if he is not a lunatic and he is not a liar and if he is not a legend, and you remember we said that a legend requires time to develop, before the records of his life are circulated, and there was not that time because the re records of his life were being circulated in 48 AD, which was a bare 20 uh, years after his death. If he is not a liar and he is not a lunatic and he is not a legend, then this man Jesus must in fact have been the son of the creator of our universe. And he is the only one who can finally tell us why we're here. What kind of thing does he say in answer to that question? Well, first of all, when he was talking once to his followers, he said this, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's recorded in a book in the New Testament of our Bible. It's in John chapter 3 and verse 6. And that's what Jesus said. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, 
we're not going to last long. That's really what he said. You're just not going to last long, certainly no longer than your parents or grandparents from whom you got your present life. The physical life that you got from them lasts at the most 70 years, sometimes 80, or in the case of Harold Macmillan, uh, over 90 years, but it certainly is very difficult to last longer than 100 years on this earth. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and it'll die after anywhere from 70 to 100 years. That's the only life that you yourself have been born with. It's called flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's only temporary. And you know that yourself. I mean, you're deader now than you were when we started this broadcast. Indeed, as the years go by, you remember more and more cells of your body die and are replaced by less and less cells. Millions of cells have died in your body this last minute. You can't stop it. In a way, we are all dying men and women. So that's the first fact we need to face. We're people who are temporary. We are born of the flesh. We won't last longer than a hundred years at the most. Secondly, this man Jesus said, you won't believe this. You won't believe it. That's what he said. He said, they will not believe. He said, when I tell people the truth, they won't believe it. They just won't believe it. And actually, it's true, isn't it? It's true of you and me. Uh, Somehow we feel we weren't made to go out like a light after 70 or 80 years. We feel... Yes, when we watch somebody else dropping into the grave, yes, that's what will happen to us, and yet somehow we can't believe it. There's something in us that feels we were made for better things than that, isn't there? There's something inside us that says, no, I know that happened to Macmillan, I know it happened to Churchill, uh, and I suppose it'll happen to me, but there's something in me that feels as if it won't die. And, of course, because we have that feeling, and uh, there is actually another verse in the Old Testament part of the Bible that says that we seem to have eternity planted within us. And isn't it true that we somehow feel we weren't made to go out like a light? We weren't made just to die and cease to be. And even the hardest headed among us, the most cynical, who say, oh yeah, after death there's just nothing, yet even we have to confess that deep down in us there's a feeling that we have been made to in some way live beyond that. And of course what this results in is that we begin to try to parley the attributes of created life into some sense of infinity. In other words, this created life that we have inherited from our parents, it isn't capable of going on beyond 70 to 100 years. But we try to parlay the characteristics of this life into some kind of eternity because we feel we're made for it. And that's why we have always this feeling of frustration. We feel frustrated by the limitations of our mental and physical life. And we're always trying to burst the bonds of this earthbound existence by catching at some of the qualities that we think life should have and we think we were made to experience. And so we're strange people, Jesus said. We really have a life that will only last for 70 to 100 years, But we ourselves feel we were made to last longer than that. And so we spend our lives trying to catch at eternity and trying to make this life in some way share the characteristics of the life that we think we were made for. And of course it assumes all kinds of experiences and attempts on our part. And what I'd like to do is talk about some of those tomorrow and see if you have felt some of these things yourself.